We're going to be palpating the lumbar spine from a prone position, and we're going to be looking for all five of the vertebrae, plus pointing out a little bit about the sacrum and ilium from this position, and finding our 12th thoracic vertebrae. So the first thing I'm going to do is again try to landmark the first and fifth, and I am going to start with the first by first finding the 12th thoracic. So I'm going to load in from the side and try to find the 12th rib. If you're having difficulty finding the 12th rib, a good place to start is first landmark the iliac crest. Turn your hand in the opposite direction using the pads of your fingers. Load in and try to find the first rib here. It is running obliquely, so once you've found that, you work your way towards center on that diagonal, but you will not be able to go all the way since it's the erectors, and this is actually attaching to the body of the 12th thoracic vertebrae. So I'm going to skip over the erectors in a general pathway and land on what I believe is the 12th spinous process. Now, a really good cue here is to look at the shape and size of the spinous process. So in the thoracic, it's fairly round and smaller than your lumbar. So I believe I've found the 12th. So we have a size in between my fingers here, and I'm going to jump down, and this is the size of the first lumbar vertebrae. So I'll go back and try to place fingers on each side, and you should be able to tell the difference that this is much smaller. Again, we'll do that again, one side, the other side versus one side to the other side. So this lumbar spinous process is considerably larger than the thoracic. So utilizing the shape plus finding our rib 12 is a good way to help us. This is the spinous process of L1, L2, 3, 4, and number 5. I'm going to take my hands off and I'm going to approach from the lower portion now. So the first thing I'm going to do is again sink in from the side and try to find the iliac crest, specifically the posterior aspect of it. As I work my way central, and you might notice a small dimpling of the skin in this area, that might help you identify where the posterior superior iliac spine is, the PSIS as we like to call it. So the iliac crest we'll work our way towards the PSIS. Now, if you're feeling the top of the PSIS, because it's actually quite large, it's a big bony object in here, I want the more superior aspect, that's often in line with the fifth spinous process of the lumbar vertebrae. So lumbar vertebrae number five, SP. So I'm gonna leave two fingers there, but if you find the top of an iliac crest, as I am here, this actually lines up with the fourth spinous process of the lumbar vertebrae. So iliac crest to L4, the top of the PSIS towards L5. Below L5 is going to be the sacrum. So this is where your lumbosacral joint is going to be. And I am starting to feel the base of your sacrum here. So spinous process of number five, four, three, two, one, and we're back at our thoracic 12, which is a considerably smaller SP. So I was able to count for starting from the rib as well as from the iliac crest and count both up and down on our spinous processes. The next task is going to be trying to identify a transverse process in the lumbar spine. Now, depending on who you have on your table, if you're working with certain individuals, typically if a female is gonna have a larger space in between their iliac crest and the rib 12. So as you can see right here, I have a couple inches of space, but if you have a male body on the table, you might end up with a very minimal amount of space as that iliac crest and that rib 12 often come closer together. So in this space here is where I am going to be trying to sink in. But what I'm gonna look for is the third transverse process, so L3's TBP. So again, I can find the PSIS, the top of it, to find five, four, and number three, or I could find rib number 12, take me towards T12, L1, L2, and again, I'm back at L3. I'm gonna go lateral 
So I want to go past the erectors. So one way to help me find where the edge of the erectors is, is I can ask my partner here to lift her head and her shoulders up a little bit off the table. Good. And I can see the erectors and feel them and I will drop off the side into the abdominals. So your thoracolumbar fascia and transverse abdominus are attaching in the back. And that's the edge of those erectors. So let's do that one more time. As she lifts up, I can easily see and the drop off happening right about here. So I'm gonna get her relaxed back down. So I want to sink both into the tissue, so deep, as well as back towards the lumbar vertebrae, medial. But I'm gonna place one or two fingers. Don't use just one finger, this is very pokey and often very uncomfortable, but I'm gonna be putting all my pressure through my middle finger, and I'm even gonna reinforce it with my other hand. I'm gonna ask my partner here to take a nice deep breath in for me. And then on the exhale, I'm gonna sink in as she's letting the air out. Now, if you don't sink in all the way on the first try, again, have them take a breath in, kind of go with them as they're breathing. You might come out a little bit, and then as they exhale. So I'm feeling a wall of denseness or muscle tissue right up against my middle finger right here. So a landmark, the SP is here, and I've actually gone about an inch and a half, two inches wide, as well as deep, about an inch and a half to two inches. I believe I'm feeling some bony resistance, so I think I'm feeling the transverse process of L3. Now, a motion that we like to have people do is to activate some muscle tissue attached to the transverse process, and the muscle that is often related here is quadratus lumborum. So one of the actions that QL does, quadratus lumborum, is to elevate an ilium, or what we call a hip hike. So I'm going to ask her to slowly start to raise her hip on that side. Good. And as she does that, I get pushed out. When she relaxes, I sink back into the tissue again. So to ask your partner to do this very slowly and gently because you don't want to cause too much discomfort. Let's try that one more time. As she raises her hip, I lift out of the tissue. And then as she relaxes, I sink back into the tissue. So that's helping me confirm if I can't feel the actual bony projection, I'm feeling the muscle tissue attached to it. So this is L3. From here, I would turn my hand down towards the transverse process of lumbar four. I could repeat the process and ask them to elevate a little bit. Good, and relax. Or I'm gonna slowly turn my hand and head up towards lumbar number two with this transverse process. And again, go ahead to start awesome and relax. So we typically do not try to palpate number one or number five because the fifth is obscured by the iliac crest and the really thick, dense connective tissue and muscle tissue and L1 one, because of rib 12 usually starts to cover it, again, making it very challenging. As well as if you have a male body on the table, there might be very minimal space to begin with. So lumbar three is usually the easiest one. And please remember, if you have a lot of dense tissue, the person has a lot of muscle tone in this area, there are a lot of adhesions in the thoracolumbar fascia, there's a really good chance you will not feel it. So you are looking for somebody that's very ectomorphic with low muscle tone that you might be able to start to feel the actual bony landmarks. But for the most part, you're just going to feel a lot of resistance to your pressure as you're sinking in here. So five spinous processes and maybe one, two, three transverse processes, and that's really going to finish our palpation of the lumbar vertebrae.